They tend to have significant difficulties with mathematics. They tend to be a little bit clumsy. They tend to have some social problems. And it's, it's been long hypothesized that these kids are born with some kind of a deficit in their visual spatial functioning. Nonverbal learning disability is considered by many a phantom diagnosis, and many uh, actually question whether it exists at all. In order to have a valid diagnosis, we need to be able to reliably identify those children, first of all. And secondly, we need to be able to reliably distinguish children with NVLD from other children. We took magnetic resonance imaging scans of children with nonverbal learning disability, Asperger's syndrome, ADHD predominantly inattentive, ADHD hyperactive, and typical children. We found what I would consider to be the first anatomical evidence of differences in uh, the brains of children with NVLD. A splenium, which is that back section serving the, the the visual and spatial areas of the brain here is much smaller in these children. It's a major structure for communication between the left and right sides of the brain. The computer was able to tell us the exact XYZ coordinate locations of all of the different areas and by taking that data we were able then to segment the corpus callosum into five equal areas and from that, we were then able to generate graphs for visual inspection. Here you see the NVLD group having a much smaller area of the splenium than any other group that we looked at. We have evidence that there's something different in the way the corpus callosum is developing in children with nonverbal learning disability. And that difference is right in the place where we think it should be, which is in the area that serves the visual and spatial regions of the brain. I still don't have enough evidence to say that NVLD is a distinct diagnosis, but I, I do think it, it supports the idea that it might be.